Hey guys, Chris Grow Fishing here. Uh, finally back, uh, beginning of the week, Tuesday, putting the pieces back together. Been on the road for 15 days straight, and uh, as you all know, rushed home. Didn't rush home, rushed to Pewaukee, Wisconsin to see my woman whoop some ass and win uh, her bodybuilding contest. So it, uh, it's been all good things and smiles in the girl household here. But uh, like I said, we do recaps. Uh, we got out of the James alive. We made some money. Woo, finally, finally, yay. But um, uh, I don't know. I'm, a, you know, I'm a competitor. I'm an angler. It always could have been better. I don't like that I fell off on days two and days three. Um, lost a fish each of those days that I never really saw. Uh, but I felt, you know, they probably could have at least got me 12 pounds, you know, 11, 12 pounds to make things better. But you know this from my history, I lose a lot of fish. But uh, for the most part, fish pretty clean, especially the way I did it. Uh, we went frogging there on day one when we laid the hammer on that 20 pound, seven ounce bag. And uh, here's how we did things throughout the week. Uh, tidal system, uh, I went and checked some history that I had prior, messed around with that for a half day of practice. That didn't work out. So I put all my marbles in making the big run to the Chickahominy and it paid off. So uh, here is the one, two, three punch, basically I did it. And uh, frogs were a big part of the deal. Uh, well, definitely, definitely my frog and set up here. Um, not sponsored by them, Spro Frog, simple, simple, killer gill. That seemed to be the juice. Um, I like the frog with a seven, three heavy veracity. And this is a heavy fast. Well, the big thing that saves me, and you'll see, and uh, if you guys ever try it, especially fishing heavy cover, uh, is this Revo Beast. 30 pounds of drag, oversized handle. Uh, when you gotta get them out and you gotta get your hand on the handle quick and you'll see bringing in five, six pound bass, it makes it a little bit easier and it makes it with confidence. But uh, all day long frogging with this, this was majority of the damage. And then another little thing I did, I even said this in my money line pick with Matt Stefan is, this, uh, this buzzing speed toad, um, I like it. Uh, really, really, really soft. I got a super cool way of rigging it and uh, Berkeley also makes it easy for you. If you see in here where the hooks pop up, they have two little tiny appendages in there that exactly tell you where to put the five aught fusion frog hook. Um, this is a double toter hook. I went with the weightless one because the pads are real thick. Uh, like I said, this is a 5 out, and then this is a 4.25 inch buzzing speed toad in white. And you guys must, you know, think this is unique. This is not a weight. Um, you can take a caulk tip and cut it, but Halo makes these. They're pretty nice. It's just a plastic bead. Allows me to deflect the bait through the pads and through the cover. Uh, on both setups, 50 pound DuraBraid spider wire all day long. Bobby Lane, Bobby Lane, uh, he's got me hooked. Um, so that was the deal. Uh, this is just a custom toad rod that I got a long time ago and it's matched up with the older Revo Beast Rocket. So this is a nine to one um, gear ratio. Uh, big handle, same style as the Beast. And then on day three, I think I weighed every single one of them on and in practice, I thought this was gonna be the go-to uh, buzz bait. Uh, everyone loves a buzz bait on the James River. Uh, this is an old school Boogerman that I busted out of the package. Love them to death. Um, Boogerman still makes some. Rowdy makes one similar. There's another knockoff company that's on um, Tackle Warehouse. But I like the old school ones on game day. So all you young anglers, if you want to go raid in your dad's tackle box, look for Boogermans. He'll be really happy you stole them. But uh, as you see, the speed, buzz and speed toad is on the back of that. Uh, it's kind of a cool setup. Get you a better shot of it. This one's beat down, but yeah, it's a cool little setup there. That buzzing speed toad lays on there nice. Uh, but in practice, was getting a lot of big bites on this. I didn't have a hook on, but day three it saved me. Caught a caught a nice one in the morning. Uh, setup simple, seven four medium heavy fast Iconelli with an Iconelli eight to one gear ratio, and this is also fifty pound Dura braid. So we are rocking the Dura braid. But yeah, that was the James River deal. Uh, was mainly uh, 
fishing a lot of pads, but my, my game plan was I was getting around pads that had a dock nearby. And on the high tide and low tide, they'd use those pads to move in and out and then the shade line of the dock and I got majority of the fish on the side of the dock where the pads was or just underneath it. Uh, you'll see from the GoPro footage, I'm putting out a pretty cool hook set video with a couple of them big ones flushing the toilet under the toilet. <laughs> under the dock, under the toilet, yes. Flushing the toilet under the dock. But uh, a lot of fun, had a good time with James. Uh, Saw some big scary spiders in our house, but that's a whole nother story. Uh, but uh, we hung out there, survived, left there, stayed in, uh, in that north or eastern swing and decided to get into the Toyota series um, over there at the Potomac. And uh, that place was a lot of fun, chock full of a lot of fish, another tidal, uh, tidal spot, but it's kind of unique. They bite differently on the tide there. Uh, I learned some tricks that... Uh, High tide is really, really good when you're fishing grass flats and uh, you can get right in a hurry there. Basically my one-two punch there was swim jig and a bullet pop, but there were some keys. I'm gonna start with the swim jig. Um, first off the rod, uh, I use a 7.2 medium heavy Iconelli with an Iconelli eight to one, but here is the key. I'm big at swim jigging on braid. I like braid, who doesn't, but these fish are pressured, boys and girls. And 15 pound, 100% fluorocarbon on there. And uh, Outcast 3 a ounce swim jig. And what I had this set up with is, this is not an Outcast color. This is a Brian Schmidt secret sniper color. When I used to be in the elites, I uh, raided his boat. No, I know some people and I uh, got some of these. Basically a purplish June bug with some tinsel. And the reason you see a chicker craw on here was, I wasn't flipping this, but they wanted it slow. This is blue craw matched up with that June bug. And the gig guys was this. This isn't your normal swim jig in tournament. You can't just chuck it out there and wind. They really wanted you to throw it as far away from the boat as possible, let it fall to the bottom, then start your true retrieve very, very slowly into your medium methodical shake on the way back and 90% of them would have it in the first 10 feet but uh, that's how we did that and another cool thing me and uh, the guy I was uh, working with Connor is after 10 o'clock they would not touch this purple crazy black and blue bandits any of the dark colors that is so standard at the Potomac you had to switch to white and it was nuts it was like clockwork um and I switched back to a half ounce, same outcast, but I've got about six or seven sugar bugs left and I think, uh, I think I'm down to three now, but uh, that was the trailer. The, I don't, I, we're not making, Berkeley's not making the sugar bug anymore, but uh, I got a few bags of them, but not many white left, but that's what we did there in the afternoon. So not gonna lie, the white caught a lot of catfish. I've never caught so many giant catfish on a swim jig in my life, but uh, I am in the 20 pound club and ruined underwear club as well for that. But uh, that was the deal there. But the main, main deal, I probably caught, I bet you 35, 40% of the fish on that, but 60, 65% of them were on old faithful Durabraid 30, Revo EXD, extra long casting, and then I got a Veracity medium fast 705 seven foot rod with a bullet pop. Look at that pretty, pretty little thing, boys and girls. Um, I would try to get this bait as far away from the boat as I could. And the key was long, slow pops, letting the rings dis disperse every time. That was the key. Moving it too fast, you weren't gonna get bit. And uh, the thing I like to do with this is, sure, it's great out of the box with uh, fusion hooks, stock, no big deal. But what I do is I put fusions back on there. I just beef up. I go to a four feather round bend, and then I go to a four EWG treble. Um, like I said, 30 pound Dura braid to about a 10 to eight inch, 17 pound mono leader. Uh, been doing that for a long time. Hookup ratio is good. Hookup ratio is so good that you guys are not going to believe this. You know, Mr. Losing Fish. I never lost a bass. Knock on wood, plastic, a phoenix boat, a hummingbird, whatever. 
I didn't lose any bass on it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it just shows how awesome those hooks are. But yeah, that was the name of the game. The problem with the Potomac is I caught hundreds of bass. I just never got a bass over three pounds. Um, and that was the deciding factor. If you can catch them, you know, four and a half, five pounder each day, boom, life is good. But we got out of there with good points. We kind of uh, were in a hole after day one. And I think we regained 40 points uh, on the day two move with having just under 14. But yeah, that was the old recap there, guys. Uh, I appreciate you guys sticking by me. We're really going into this, you know, northern swing, into this midsummer with the foot on the gas. Really excited about the opportunities we have here. We are fishing the whole Toyota series. So the ultimate goal is yes to win, yes to cash checks, but in the end, to finish in the top 25 so I can go to Gunnersville and fish the championship in November. But the main goal at stake, you all know, is Champlain. I love that place. And me doing the math, and I'm not that good at it, but I had Cody Pike help me and a couple other guys, Matt Stefan, he's smarter than anyone. I need a top 20 there. Top 20 will get me to St. Lawrence and to the Tackle Warehouse Championship. So boys and girls, fingers crossed, foot on the gas. We're going to do this. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks for the support. Chain Rats for life.